sorry. Uh, give me one second. I was just making sure that I haven't um, lost anything. You know how those, you know how those wild Australian creatures are. They like to to nick things and all sorts of fun fun stuff. So, what we shall do? Is... Okay, that's looking good. Hopefully, my thing isn't freaking out. It was a bit uh, a bit wild earlier. Okay, all right. Uh, so welcome, welcome. Uh, my name is Jezebel. I'm a magician's assistant VTuber who streams on Twitch. Uh, and today I will be talking about uh, where I currently live, which is Australia. And that's actually where I'm streaming, uh, where I'm beaming in from. Um, they've trapped me in um, this little this little box um, or they'll stuff me in a cage. But uh, generally speaking, I am live from Australia. <laughs> so let me go like this to the side and then let me find the right button. Aha. Uh -huh. So I'll be talking about Australia today. And as you can see, there's a really cute illustration here. Um, if you're in the panel, you get uh, one of these uh, has my details on the back. Uh, but this is actually uh, art that was specifically done for the convention. So this is like a special freebie for those who attend the panel. Uh, so how safe are you in Australia? What to do when you visit us here down under? And you're supposed to say it like that. So, little tidbit for you. Australia, a dangerous place where many a feared creature is known to exist. Lots of fun and perhaps confusing slang, and I have some examples to share with everyone today. We have some very weirdly named places. Uh, we like big things. Uh, you'll see that later. And every Australian is 100% serious when talking about Australia. Always, no exceptions. So we're going to talk about some feared Australian creatures. Firstly, we have the hoop snake. There's a lovely illustration here. They are, a, we have many snakes in Australia. Um, the hoop snake is one of the most feared because unlike other snakes, which will slither across the ground, it'll hold onto its tail and it will roll at you uh, at 60 kilometers an hour, which is, uh, I went and looked it up because I, I don't know, the, I don't know what miles are and it's 40 miles an hour. So um, very, very fast and very dangerous. You don't want to be, you don't want to be dealing with a hoop snake. Uh, in Australia, we have stores that sell buttock protection equipment. Make sure to buy some if you visit. Thylacines. Uh, they're also known as the Tasmanian tiger. And no, this is not the same as the des Tasmanian devil. That's something completely different. They're different sizes, completely different um, uh, families, I, I don't remember the exact terminology, the, uh, like the, the, like one's a canine, one's something else. Uh, they were hunted, unfortunately, to extinction in the 19th and 20th centuries to protect livestock, so they're not really a issue nowadays. However, some do claim to have seen it since then. There are no confirmed sightings. You can actually look online and there are some, uh, there's a video uh, that's quite famous of one of the last known thylacines walking around. And uh, someone recently, I can't remember how recently, but within like the last year or two, has actually done a recolor of that video. So you can actually see it in color. And it's quite, it's quite a sombering thing to watch because evidently with the fact that uh, they're no longer with us, it's, it's quite sad. So let me just take a quick drink. The Yowie. Now, the Yowie is Australia's Bigfoot. It's mentioned often in Indigenous Australian oral history. Um, it's so famous that it has its own brand of chocolate. I've included an image here so you can see it. Um, it's a little bit like the Kinder, the Kinder Surprise egg, where there's a toy inside. Um, and the Yowie toys, uh, chocolates come in many different color wrappings. Um, and then you can see a statue to the Yowie here, which is in, uh, I believe it was Queensland. Uh, they're not usually aggressive and they tend to want to be left alone and they vary in size. So yet another one of Australia's, it's not really a feared creature, but it is one of Australia's many, many interesting um, wildlife. And then you have the mighty firehawks. They're actually a term used for three different types of hawks. You have the black kite, the whistling kite, and the brown falcon. Uh, and what happens is this was first witnessed in 2008. And these three types of hawks will pick up burning branches from bushfires. They'll fly them to other locations. And then what they'll do is they will drop the, the, the burning branches into uh, bushland. 
they will do things uh, like they, they effectively spread fires. And what happens is it either scares out the creatures that are in in the grass, so you might like mice, um, rats, and, uh, several native Australian creatures. It'll either scare them out or unfortunately they will die because they get burned to a crisp. And then the, the hawks will eat them. So they it's um I guess it's their version of fast food, potentially. Uh, but uh, there's actually some videos of this as well. It's actually quite fascinating to watch. Uh, the the birds of Australia are all very very smart. We have a lot of birds that have learned how to use tools to do things like open rocks, uh, sorry, open like eggs or um, or like injure injure animals with rocks and things like that. Uh, there's a in the Northern Territory there is uh, it's called the Northern Territory Wildlife Park. They actually do demonstrations where they have a bird pick up a rock. Uh, and actually break open some eggs as part of like the educational shows that they have. It's quite fascinating. Um, but the fact that the birds are arming themselves is very typical of Australia and a little bit alarming, but uh, thankfully they only seem to be interested in uh, dinner at this point in time. So humans are probably safe for now. We'll see. Spiders. Everyone's heard about Australia and spiders. Australia has too many spiders. I hate spiders. Spiders are awful. I had to look up this image. I suffered spiders for all of you, so I hope you're happy. Uh, I hate spiders. I, they're generally the worst. Many of them are very bad. There are several um, very, very uh, poisonous, venomous. There are several very icky spiders um, in Australia that can harm you. There's one uh, that if bite, it bites you, you basically, uh, it's, it's not, it's itself isn't poisonous. Sorry, itself isn't venomous. I, I can't remember what the, the terminology is between the two. But when it bites you, it's actually biting you with an infestation of its mouth. So like humans, who when when you get bitten by a human, there's a lot of like bacteria and like stuff that that keeps your mouth, uh, you know, it, it, your you know your natural bacteria and things like that. It's kind of the same for this spider. So what happens is you end up with um, painful injuries that can last for a very long time. Uh, so spiders are bad. Asterix, daddy long legs are fine. Daddy long legs are tiny and cute and daddy long legs are allowed to stay in Australia. Everything else can leave as far as I'm concerned. Uh, and then, yes, I, I looked up this image. Uh, some things like this image here happen. No, thank you. Uh, in this particular image, what has happened is uh, usually in farmland areas, so uh, like Queensland and New South Wales, what will happen is uh, there'll be flooding, which will scare all the spiders, and they will uh, take a, they will uh, have a tiny little thread that gets, that they let go of, and that catches in the wind, carries them to a new location, and drops them. So this is like millions and millions of tiny little spider web trails from these fly, flying spiders. So not only do you have flying spiders, which in itself is the most awful thing in existence, you also have these just fields and fields of, of horrendous spider webs that you have to deal with. It is literally the worst two for one deal in existence. And I never ever want to witness it in real life. I just, just the idea of getting spider webs all through my hair or on my clothes is the worst thing I can think of at this point in time. And probably all I will ever think of. I suffered so many spider pictures for all of you. I hope you are happy. Okay, bunyips, bunyips less scary. Still not great, still a little scary, not as awful as spiders. <laughs> bunyips are a creature from Indigenous Australian mythology, uh, more specifically Southeastern Australian. Uh, there's an illustration here that is from 1935 that kind of details what the bunyip is supposed to look like. It's, uh, it is, it was, its first known appearance is in 1812, so it's quite, quite a long time ago. And it's thought to look like a seal or a swimming dog. Um, and it's said to lurk in swamps, billabongs, creeks, riverbeds, and waterholes. So it is a uh, aquatic creature that will attack you from the waters of Australia, uh, like Australian rivers and, and creeks and that sort of thing. Uh, there is not any, I had a look to see if there's any more recent uh, imagery of it. I could not find anything. Uh, 
maybe maybe that's for the best because looking at this image it's kind of terrifying i would hate to see this in real life personally especially considering it, it this particular image seems to have one giant eye on the top of its head which is concerning but uh in general uh be very careful around rivers and creeks in general you should be careful about rivers and creeks anyway in australia we do we do have things like flash flooding uh not as interesting as a bunyip but flash floods uh spiders all sorts of creepy crawlies all sorts of fun things yes so dingoes finally something cute dingoes are adorable dingoes are very very smart uh they're australia's uh wild dog they are they have been in australia for about four thousand years they were brought over by uh i think it was it was uh, some kind uh, there was some some travelers that came to australia they're not technically native but they are effectively considered native because of how long they've been here and how they've integrated with uh, the Australian outback. They are found quite pretty much everywhere. You can find dingoes anywhere in Australia. They're not restricted to certain areas. Uh, there are many groups trying currently to protect the dingo due to its endangered status. Uh, often uh, farmers and the, and uh, 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 people out in the bushlands and things like that uh, have things against the dingo because they feel that dingoes are the cause of things like the death of their wildlife, uh, sorry, the like the the wildlife, the their livestock, that sort of thing. But in truth, it's probably more so to do with things like feral cats, uh, feral dogs, which are not the same as dingoes. They're very different. Um, and yes, they get a bad rap, but they're always a good boy. Dingoes are very cute. I've actually gotten to pet a dingo. I got to uh, got to pet it. I got to take photos with them. Uh, there's a group here in Melbourne uh, called the, oh, my brain's, I forgot what it's called, uh, Dingo Wildlife Research Centre. Oh, let me quickly check it because I wanted to shout them out. Dingo, Australian Dingo Foundation, there we go. My, <laughs> I forgot for a second. They, they spend a lot of time, they go to uh, schools or they go to uh, places where they can give presentations on the dingo. There was a couple of years back, there was a story about a dingo that fell from the sky. And what had happened was it was a dingo pup that had been picked up by, uh, I believe it was a hawk. And the hawk had dropped it. And so it, this dingo fell from the sky into someone's backyard. And it turned out it was a purebred dingo. So that's gone a lot of story. It's been really good. They, they, they use the dingo as an ambassador now to try and uh, educate people about dingoes and uh, tell, tell, you know, tell stories about it you know, people get a chance to meet it. Uh, like, I think it was international news because, I mean, <laughs> of all, of, of course, of all places, of all places, Australia is one that has flying dogs, right? <laughs> like, of course it's Australia. Would it be anywhere else but Australia? But yes, dingoes are really good. They're very cute. Uh, they're, they're, the dingo pups are adorable. Um, I've seen some in the wild before. Uh, but obviously, because they are a wild dog, they're not really a pet. Uh, there are some means of um, conservation where a uh, mixed breed, like um, they've been mixed with uh, like domestic dogs to try and help. It's kind of like how you get like domestic cats being bred with uh, wild cats to encourage the domestication of them, things like that. And it's also partially a means of trying to conserve the, the gene pool for them. Uh, and there's only a very small amount of purebred dingoes still in Australia, which is very sad because they are lovely. And as you can see, they are very cute. And they have a very, very distinct like face shape to actual dog, to, to versus the actual dogs. Like the, the, the face and the ears is a very distinct and different shape to like a, a, a domestic dog is. Victoria's big cats. Now, they're seen regularly by locals, especially in the Gippsland area. Uh, people don't know what kind of species a big cat it is. The, the, the only photos that people have managed to get, like this one here, um, only seem to really be at night. A lot of people seem to think it might be a lioness, possibly something that has escaped from a zoo at some point. There's not a lot known about them, um, but apparently they cause a lot of trouble for farmers. So you never know. Maybe if you come to Melbourne and you go to the Gippsland area, maybe you'll see a big cat out in the wild. Who knows? Um, I had a look into it some more um, because this one is actually one I wasn't familiar with. 
but uh, all the photos were either people making fun of it, which is totally fine. Um, there was photos of like just normal domestic cats. Um, all the pictures were of panthers, which seemed even more unlikely than a lioness, but who knows, who knows? I know that we've had um, lions in the, the zoos and the, there's like some safari parks here, especially in Victoria. So it is possible that something's escaped from there, who knows? drop bears everyone's heard of drop bears right everyone knows about the dreaded drop bear they're one of australia's most feared creatures especially for tourists uh australians are protected at a young age by eating vegemite uh if you if you have ever had an australian friend try to get you to eat vegemite it's not to torture you it's to protect you and if you didn't eat it then we can't help you if you get in by a drop bear i'm sorry but it is your own fault we've done everything we can to protect you but if you just won't eat it then can't help you there koala drop bear you can't tell until it's too late unless you have gone to somewhere that is a conservation park or a zoo or a safari place and it is in an enclosure uh, you should never approach a koala in the wild because the koala may not actually be a koala it may be a drop bear in disguise as you can see in this image here, uh, this uh, individual is wearing safety gear. Uh, it appears they only have a koala because if they, it was a drop bear, they would already be dead. Now, as I mentioned, Australians are protected at a young age with Vegemite. Therefore, drop bears will definitely prefer to go for tourists. They can always tell. It doesn't matter if you have moved to Australia and you are now living here. It doesn't matter. It's fine. You're fine. Uh, if you have an accent, they'll be able to tell. If your accent is an accent, but you live in Australia or you're from Australia, you're fine, as long as you've eaten Vegemite. If you have an accent and you are not from Australia, they will tell, and it'll be too late for you. I'm very sorry. Now on to some fun and silly, weird place names that we have in Australia. So this is just a couple. I do recommend going and looking up some of them. Uh, some of them are not appropriate for, uh, for the, the convention. Uh, Australia has, a, has, a, has an intimate relationship with uh, swear words and uh, words that are considered safe for work. Uh, especially a lot of our slang. I had to be very careful about what slang I picked to include because a lot of it is, mm, yes, it's a little bit on the not safe work side, but just some fun examples. So in Tasmania, we have Eggs and Bacon Bay and also Break Me Neck Hill. Uh, in the Northern Territory, we have Humpty Doo, which I have actually been to. I've been there several times. You have uh, in New South Wales, you have Come By Chance, and then in South Australia, you have Nowhere Else Road. And then in Tasmania, uh, and, then, and again in Tasmania, you have Devil's Kitchen, which is, you can see a picture here with, uh, with uh, the lookout for Devil's Kitchen. There's a lot of really interesting name places in Australia. Uh, some off the top of my head that I can mention is uh, if you've heard of, if you've heard of the NT, in the Northern Territory, uh, for example, they had some fun with some road names. I can't mention all the road names because of it, but um, there's a Coconut Grove, which is a suburb. And in Coconut Grove, there's a Baby Crescent. Um, and there's another street that starts with a D. Hello, hello, welcome, welcome, welcome. <laughs> so there's, yes, uh, there's lots of very fun and interesting and suspicious names in Australia. So feel free to look those up. They are, they are quite fun to look at. Now, big things. Australia likes big things. They like a lot of big things. Uh, here's a bunch of them. This is, this is only some of them. This is, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. There's like 13 of them. There are 61 big things in Australia and not pictured of things like, um, there's like the big acorns. Uh, there's, uh, you can see over here, there is the big pineapple. If I can get my mouse there, the big pineapple here. You have, uh, the big banana, you have the big koala, there's like the big mango. I don't know why we have these. Oh, the big crocodile. Uh, this is from memory. I think this is actually near Humpty Doo. So there you go. Uh, 
I don't know why Australia has so many big things. I don't know why we're obsessed with big things. It's just a thing. It's a thing. Um, and it is a classic thing to visit when you when you come here. If you don't come to at least one big thing when you go to Australia, have you really visited Australia? Now, now for a fun part. Let's see. Let's see if people can guess what this is. So do you know Australian slang? Australia is known for its colourful language, but we also have some confounding slang as well. Um, I've got a list of slang, uh, and uh, if you learn these, maybe you'll be able to blend in. Maybe, maybe you might just have a chance against the drop there. Maybe it will be confused momentarily enough, enough so that you can escape. All right, here are some fun ones. So I'm not going to do this in order because I'm going to start with one that's probably the easiest. So there's pluggers, which is also known as thongs. Now, no, it's not the underwear, although we do call that type of underwear thongs as well, which is extra confusing. Yes? Uh, oh, sorry. If you want to ask a question um, or if you want to say anything, you do need to come up to the microphone because I can't hear you. Use the thongs to grab things, right? Is that one of those? No, so that's, that's tongs. But thongs are what you put on your feet. They're also known as sandals uh, in, or flip-flops. In uh, New Zealand, they're called jandals. I don't know why, but they are. <laughs> I know some New Zealand slang, so I might, as an as a extra treat, I might include some of that too. Uh, now, Arvo, can anyone tell me what Arvo is? Can I get any guesses? No? Okay. Arvo is afternoon. Runners, runners are, try to think of what the, what another word for, <laughs> I just know them as runners, uh, sneakers, uh, running shoes, they, they, we call them runners, uh, servo, you'll see, as you can see, there's a lot of words that end in O that we have, servo is a service station, also known as a petrol station, uh, an esky, so an esky, yes, you know what an esky is? <sighs> Do you know what an esky is? To the one of those coolers? Yes, yes, yeah. you are correct. You are. It is a. It is a cooler. In uh, in New Zealand, it's called a chili bin. Uh, now, I have a feeling some people might know what akadaka is when they hear the actual where where they hear the uh, translation for it. Does anyone know what, know what akadaka is? Uh, the hint is you will have heard heard them before. No? Okay, so Akadaka is what Australians... Oh, yes? Do you know? Something that's to do with academics? No. No, that's a really good guess. Uh, but no. Akadaka makes no sense uh, unless, unless you've heard the term before. It is what Australians call the band ACDC. <laughs> yes. So if you hear Australians talking about Akadaka, they're talking about ACDC. Now, uh, another one you hear, you might, this one you might be familiar with, aggro. Uh, it's basically aggressive. It's, it's, we have a lot of words that we cut off half of them and then we add an O to them. So some of them make sense. And then you have stuff like akadaka. Uh, another one is ankle biter. Any guesses what that might be? And no, it's not an, another one of Australia's fun creatures. It's actually, oh yes. You know what this one is, Mike? I think this one, this term is used sometimes in other places as well. Oh, yes. Ankle biters. Kids? Yes, you are correct. The answer is A, children. <laughs> um, we have some other colorful terms for children, but I can't say them here. <laughs> now, this, this word, chuk, actually has two meanings. So one is probably a more obvious meaning, which is chicken. Uh, usually used for things like, uh, oh, I'm going to go get some chook. Uh, I'm going to get some, you know, I'm going to go to the chook shop and get some, get like chicken and chips. The other meaning is chook as in, um, oh, this person's acting like a real chook, you know? So they're acting like a fool. So that's that's what that word gets used for as well. Um, now this, uh, chugga wobbly. This one has upset a few Americans that I've spoken to before. <laughs> When I explained it, can anyone guess what chuck wobbly means? 
because I have chuck wobbly and then I have chuck yui and they're two very very different different terms no okay chuck wobbly is how we tend to say someone is having a temper tantrum so you chuckle so so ah uh, you know um that kid over there is chucking a wobbly um they're screaming their head off uh, because their parent didn't want to buy them you know a, a toy or whatever so yes chuckle wobbly um it's not as common anymore uh it it it, it is still used often though uh now chuck yui is how do i how do i explain this it's kind of I had to actually look up how to spell Yui because I've never written it down. I've only ever said it. But Chuck Yui is actually doing a U-turn when you're driving. So, you, so it's like, oh, I just need to Chuck a Yui here. Uh, and then we'll go back because we've driven down the wrong side, uh, drunk, driven down the wrong street. Uh, now, Maccas. I feel like Maccas is something that most people want. Oh, yes. That's McDonald's. Hey, there we go. And I did confirm earlier that um, I that in America it's often called Mickey D's. And uh, in my opinion, Macca's is much easier to say. <laughs> it's it's much fast. Australian okay, Australian language is all about generally making something shorter or making something make no sense at all. That that's that that's the rule of Australian slang. It either makes no sense, like pluggers for for shoes. Uh, for sandals or things like macas where you take take like 90 percent of the word you cut it off you slap an a on it or you slap an o on it and then you're good to go it's why you also get things like people's names so like someone who that's named them might, might be gary uh will get changed to gaza um you might hear someone who doesn't get even called their name they might be called a sheila which is uh which is basically a, like girl or lady uh, there is there is some rhyme and reason to how we do things, uh, but then again, there are some that also don't make sense. So uh, another one is trackies or tracky dacks, and I believe the how do how do I describe this? Uh, it's like sweatpants uh, and like a hoodie. Uh, usually, usually it's talking about the the pants part, so the sweatpants. So those are called trackies. Or tracky dax. I say trackies. Tracky dax is too long for my for my taste. It's too many actual letters. Trackies is, is nice and nice and that simple. And then you have uh, whoop whoop. Uh, and whoop whoop is effectively middle of nowhere. Um, so oh man, we lost out in the middle of whoop whoop. I don't know where to go. Uh, the the GPS isn't working out here. <laughs> we're, we were, were or it and it the thing is with whoop whoop is there is no measure there is no measure to whoop whoop it is just it's just somewhere out there it it's it, it there is no measure to it you can use it in many ways and shapes and forms but whoop whoop is somewhere it is somewhere that is not here usually considered to be like out in bushland um or far away um or like small towns if you're like in the big city uh, so it's a very versatile term. And then here's one you may have heard before, which is struth. And you have to say it like that, because if you don't say it like that, you're wrong. And struth is basically an exclamation. Uh, it's usually used in a negative way. So it's like, oh, struth. My entire computer is shut down and I was about to start a stream. Well, this sucks. Um, and actually, I just realized one that I forgot to add here, and I'm going to add it because I can. So similar to whoop whoop, there's one that's uh, where people will use the term, oh, walkabout. So walkabout. So, oh, he's gone walkabout, which is, um, he's gone walkabout in the middle of whoop whoop, if you want like a full sentence. Uh, walkabout is kind of wandered off, uh, you know, just disappeared, that sort of thing. It's, you know, it's, it's. We have a lot of, yeah, we have a lot of fun words. Oh, I have another one. I forgot this one too. So I'm not sure how specific this is to Australia, but uh, thingo, thingamabob, thingy, thingamajig, anything that we can't, you can't remember the word of, or, you know, uh, it's, it's a thingy, like the thingy over there, or that uh, go get the thingamajig from over, uh, over, over in Wolfport for me. If you listen to Australian radio, 
or anything like that, um, it can be very confusing if you don't know what you're talking about. But here's some, you know, fun Aussie slang that you can uh, pull out and use next time when, uh, when you're, you know, talking to friends. You can maybe trick them into thinking you're Australian if you can pull off the accent. Um, who knows? Who knows? Now, I really wish, I really wish I could show you this. I really wish I could show you this. Um, I can tell you, I can tell you what it looks like, but I cannot show you the image because the image, the image itself, the image itself is not safe for work. Sorry, no, no, it's not not safe for work. However, when I explain to you this tourism ad, you will understand why I cannot show you. And the thing with Australia is we like to make all these kinds of jokes. We might love to make these kinds of jokes. Uh, and it's not just the Northern Territory. You can add, look up other places. There's recently one for South Australia. And there's, there's a lot of innuendo when it comes to Australian tourism ads. So if you look up Northern Territory tourism ad and look at the images, you will understand. But I will tell you what it says. It says, um, see you in the NT. And now you understand why I can't show it on screen. <laughs> uh, so yes, there are some, there are, there are a lot of ads like that. Um, yeah, yes, yes. So I do recommend looking them up. They're very funny to look at, but I, I cannot show them here. Uh, and then I also wanted to show off some Aussie, Aussie treats, some Aussie snacks. So we have the classic, we have the, oops, let me go back a bit. Oh no, wait, hold on. I clicked too many times. Uh, we have the classic fairy bread. It is a Australian birthday party staple. If you didn't have fairy bread, you did not live. I've had Americans. Um, a friend of mine who is American who lives here has said that fairy bread is, is awful and they are wrong. Fairy bread is a wonderful thing. It is a slab of white bread <laughs> with margarine. It has to be margarine. It can't be butter. It has to be margarine. And then it has to be the round sprinkles. Uh, we call them hundreds and thousands here. Uh, and this is a birthday staple in Australian, especially like Australian kids' birthday parties. It is a staple. If you didn't have fairy bread, you did not live. And fairy bread is fantastic. I don't care what anyone says. There are variations of this where you have like the long sprinkles or you have the chocolate sprinkles. And those are both abominations as far as I'm concerned. Uh, the Golden Gay Time ice cream. And yes, that slogan does say it's, it's say it's hard to have a gay time on your own. This is a legitimate slogan that the ice cream uses. It's a very tasty ice cream. It's um, it's the the bits on the outside are bits of cookie. It's not nuts, uh, but yeah, it's gold gay time. They have different flavors. Uh, they have all sorts of fun stuff. It's a very good ice cream. If you get a chance to try it, I do recommend it. Uh, and I, because I personally, I hate nuts, so. Um, I actually didn't have these for the longest time because I thought it was nuts on them. And then someone told me it wasn't. So I was very surprised and pleased that I could finally eat one. Uh, but yes, no, it's very fun. It's a, it's a choice. It's a choice of the name. <laughs> um, and I have also given um, a, this, this, I know that Milo is eaten elsewhere in other, other countries, but uh, it is a staple of Australian uh, afternoon snacks is the, the Milo. And I've also given a very important uh, guide on how you eat Milo. You do not use a level teaspoon. You do not use a heap teaspoon. You use a Milo teaspoon when you make your Milo. If there is more milk in your Milo than there is Milo, then you have not got a Milo. <laughs> the only time that this is incorrect is if you are having um, the Singaporean dinosaur Milo drink and then their ratios are correct for that particular drink. But if you're having it in Australia, you should be using a Milo, Milo teaspoon. And then of course, the infamous Vegemite. So Vegemite, um, as I've told you, is important to, to keeping us safe from drop bears. Uh, and in this image, this image is technically incorrect. This is far too much Vegemite on a slice of bread. You should have probably about a quarter of that amount. Uh, I see the mistake often that people have Vegemite and they will do things like they will try and take a mouthful of it like it's peanut butter. Don't do that. It's like 90% salt. Please do not eat peanut. Please do not eat Vegemite like it's peanut butter. That is how you die. 
You are supposed to have a slice of toast. You are supposed to have some butter, which you put on it. And then you put a very small amount of Vegemite. Think of it like if you're trying to, uh, it, like in, you know how in books where they say, oh yes, I've, I've cured myself on being um, um, safe from this poison because I had small amounts of it for 20 years. This is how you should be eating your Vegemite. Do not have enough that it will poison you, okay? Good, good, all right. Now, this is my last slide. However, I do also have a fun video and then I'll have um, some time for any questions. Doesn't have to be related to Australia, can also just be uh, in general. But I have a fun video to show you of a classic Australian incident, shall we say. <laughs> Let me pull that up for you. Oh, wait, there's a photo. No, okay. All right, let me bring that up. So the title of this video for context is called Georgie's Long Stabby Thing. We have a, um, uh, a morning show in Australia called The Today Show. They have a lot of instances of interesting morning incidents. So I do recommend in your own time, looking them up. Another one you can look up is um, a, a, a Greatest Australian Hero Interview. If you need a translation, I'm sorry, I can't help you. I've already written a translation once for someone because they couldn't understand what was happening, but it's funny to watch anyway. Now that I've given you some important key Australian slang, maybe you'll be able to understand it, but uh, I, I'm sorry, I'm not available for Australian to English translations. Welcome back to the show. Um, here is an apropos of nothing. Got up this morning at a quarter past three. Went um, out, went to, you know, walk down the hallway to the shower mm -hmm. and the front door is wide open, like wide open. Oh. And so I woke up my wife and said, did you leave the front door open just because I wanted to wake her up? Yeah, and she said, look, it's happened case. a few times that the front door is open. And so I grabbed this, this long stabby thing that I have next to the bed just in case someone breaks in. A long stabby Yeah, because your bloke's got to protect his family, right? Yeah. So it got me thinking, what do you have by your bed that is long and stabby or whatever that, that is going to make a mess of someone who tries to break into your house and, and try and steal something from your home? I've got a sorty thing. It's got its own case. And um, inside the wardrobe, I've got a steel bat. A steel bat? <laughs> what, the one Dennis Lee used? A a no, a steel yeah. baseball bat. <laughs> oh, it's just right. hidden in the corner. I'm going to mess with Wilkinson. <laughs> Free access. Georgie, right do you have something? Well, Tim's my long stabby thing. But, I, but, I, <laughs> but I, used to have, I used to have the Olympic torch under oh. the bed when I was single. But, yeah, now I've got Tim. That's, that's an excellent <laughs> Lucky. Long, long stabby thing. A multitude of uses. <laughs> exactly. Well Thanks, done. Lise. You're yeah. hearing me. Yeah, totally. Yeah. My husband's What's wrong? Use, my husband's useless. Is he? Uh, completely. <laughs> he sleeps through any strange disturbances. <laughs> I need scripts. I think it's news oh, time. That's too funny. Uh, Benny, do you have a, <laughs> anything? Could your eyes water any more than no. they are right now? No. No, that is probably one of the funniest things I've ever heard on TV. Um, look, I, yeah. I've got uh, just the golf club, so I've got one on each. I've got three, three, three think, stories. That's, that's yeah, but, well, can I make a point? If, yeah. if you've got an intruder coming into your house, why would you want to actually stab them? That means you've got to get up close and personal with them. I'd want to be standing back and whacking them off from a distance. Yeah. So you don't... You don't... <laughs> <laughs> so what are you saying? You don't have a box. He's going out for a while. <laughs> Here we go, George. Don't. Once again, just the girls. The boy, boys just can't handle the heat. I don't understand what it. The... <laughs> What's going on? I think it might be news time now. I think it is. Have you got any scripts yet, George? I'm waiting on my scripts. Here they come. Thank Here you we very go. much, Richard. Yeah, Richard's worthwhile. <coughs> All right, Lisa. It is 6.30, so we will go ahead with the news. Good morning to you. So I hope you enjoyed that. It's one of my favourite, favourite clips from Australian TV. Uh, poor word choices were made. That, that, is, that is for sure. Mm. Um, but yeah. That, that's that's it. Um, that was that was my Australian presentation. I hope you learnt some things. I hope you are maybe perhaps a little more well protected now against um, the likes of the drop bear. Um, you know uh, that we are a fearsome place full of spiders. I didn't even bring up things like the all the poisonous plants, and uh, I didn't even bring up that many snakes. I only brought up a hoop snake. Like there's there's so many other things. Like I could have talked about the king brown. Um, there's, you know, Australia has most of the most deadly snakes in, in the world here. So, um, thankfully though, thankfully though, for the most part, as long as you're not going out, you know, really far in the bush, 
generally you're pretty safe. The, the big city doesn't tend to have snakes or, and yeah, spiders I can't help you with. Spiders are everywhere. But uh, snakes, snakes generally are pretty okay. I like snakes. Snakes are very cute. I particularly like, um, there's a snake in America, uh, the, the hognose snake. I think they're very cute. We can't have them here because they're mildly venomous. Uh, I think they're very cute. Snakes are cute, uh, except for when they're trying to kill you. Um, which is a lot of Australian snakes, unfortunately. We do have some really cute ones, like we have carpet pythons, things like that. But uh, you have things like the king brown. We have some water snakes. I didn't even mention things like crocodiles and like jellyfish. Yes, so Australia is a dangerous place, but as long as you know how to navigate it, you should be okay. Mm. So do we have any questions? Yes. Um, do you consider Australia a continent, an island, or both? It is both. Australia is both an island and a continent. Did you know Australia is actually bigger in size than America? Like uh, in actual land size, it is actually bigger than America. The shape is not quite the same, obviously, because we have like a really weird shape that kind of looks like someone took a bite out of the bottom of it. And then there's like a little bit of like a bit sticking up the top. Um, and then we forget about Tasmania because Tasmania is, you know, <laughs> over there. But uh, in general, yeah, it's actually, it's it's quite funny. There's a, there was a celebrity, uh, a movie actor who was talking about his time where he came to Australia and he wanted to go from Melbourne to Uluru. Um, for context, Uluru is in the middle of Australia and it would take about, about two to three days to get there. And uh, he was like, oh yeah, I'll just take a taxi and then realize how big we actually are. <laughs> We just don't have a lot of stuff in the middle of Australia. There's lots of desert and lots of uh, rainforest and things like that. Hmm. But yeah, um, any other questions? Yes. All right. Have you been to the Outback? Yes, I have many times. I've been into the Outback. I have uh, ridden things like quad bikes and motorbikes and horses. I have made friends with an emu. Uh, I have uh, I have petted many a koala not drop bear because drop bears are evidently i'm still here so i haven't run into a drop bear um i do i have however um petted koalas i have uh, made friends with some wallabies uh, there's a lot of really cute australian creatures uh if you go all the way back to uh, if you look at the postcard you see quite a few the emu on there has been uh, made into a death emu because they are a little bit aggressive sometimes however they are actually also quite cute uh, and uh, they will do things like if you do this, they will they will copy you. Um, so you, like if you move your head around, they will actually track you. Uh, well, uh, that we do have some uh, murder birds, which are called cassowaries, which are basically just dinosaurs. Think of like a tiny T Rex with feathers uh, and giant claws that can rip you apart. That's a cassowary. <laughs> Any other questions? Uh, have you seen an anime dub that has an Australian accent? Um, I have seen a, I have seen one Australian accent before uh, in dub, and that was uh, for the animation Free, uh, and it was okay. Uh, it's it, ha they had uh, they had a a good good reasonable dub of that. Yeah, um, Ghost Hunt is also another one that has an Australian accent. Oh, Ghost Hunt! I haven't heard of that one. I might have to look at that in the future, maybe. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see what else what else uh, try and think of any any other series that I've seen that have Australian accents I have seen people do um, <laughs> I saw a TikTok recently of someone replacing uh, someone doing like a fan dub of haiku with Australian accents uh, which was very good uh, and also uh, you would get in so much more trouble <laughs> Like I've mentioned, Australians do like to swear a lot. Uh, I actually have a redeem on my Twitch channel, which go, is called Go Full Aussie, uh, where for five minutes I have to talk uh, at, in the more native of tongue, I suppose you could say, uh, which usually results in me swearing for five minutes. <laughs> because usually I'm playing a scary game and uh, usually that's that's just how it, how it turns out to be. <laughs> uh, but it's very fun. Yes, yes. Um, and the uh, the hard the hard C word that rise with hunt is very common here. Um, oh, I, something I didn't explain. Mm. 
So you might hear the term mate. And uh, that is a term that is used here in Australia. But generally speaking, mate is not a, it does depend on the tone, but for the most part, it's actually a derogatory term here. Um, and I can't use it in its full capacity because I, I immediately wanted to start swearing. <laughs> um because usually like i said it's used in a derogatory way uh, but it's like oi mate stop uh stop stop trying to get into my lane i i'm 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 ahead of you you have to wait you have to wait you have to because usually it's used a lot in road rage incidents okay it's it's a thing you use you don't use it in a pleasant tone um for the most part for the most part there are there are occasions um it's it's kind of like how when you call someone um a B word without uh, malice behind it, uh, but people get very confused because we use the C word as a term of affection, and mate is tend tends to be used in a negative way. <laughs> so, a little bit of a um, little bit of info there you go about the likes of uh, of, of that. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you watch sports involving Australia teams? uh not really i i'm not i'm not really that into sports myself um i the only sports i've ever really watched is um i sometimes watch the equestrian stuff in the olympics uh sports anime is not really my thing either i mean i've watched free but uh the i can't even think of any anime that i've watched recently that included sports not really my kind of thing uh, uh, but I won't watch something just because it has Australians in it, especially if it means that there's likely to be very badly done Australian accents because um, they can be very painful to listen to. <laughs> Any other questions? No? Okay. Oh, yes? What do you think about the conspiracy theory that Australia does not exist? I exist, don't I? Are you saying I don't exist? I mean, this is a conspiracy theory out there that Australia does not exist. Yes, yes. Australia is made up of paid actors only. We actually, everything is, is, uh, is filmed uh, live in, in a studio audience from, a, 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 I can't say the country because it is, it is a secret, but yes, no, we, we're all made up. I don't actually exist. I've, 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 I've been lying to you this whole time. I'm so sorry. Um, oh, 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 um, oh dear, oh dear, uh, 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 okay, so, uh, I've been, I've been mentioning it, uh, several times this, this weekend that, uh, the convention is holding me, holding me hostage, I've been, I've been stuck in these panels, and, uh, um, and, uh, sometimes you may have seen me being wheeled around in a cage, uh, they, they've told me I have to go back in the cage, so, uh, do we have, do we have any more questions? Do we have any more questions? Yes, yes? Last question. Uh, what are your thoughts on your Kiwi neighbors? Oh, oh, um, I I like New Zealand. Uh, I've been there several times. It's a very lovely place. Uh, the hungi is always good if you get invited to a hungi. Uh, think of it like a, the equivalent of like a cookout. Uh, very tasty. Um, the love the accent. Uh, they are wonderful. Uh, uh, in indigenous Maori culture is very uh, very. Uh, beautiful if you get a chance to learn about it i do recommend it uh you get to like you learn about really fun things like the haka and the differences between uh the the dances depending on um if you're uh male presenting or female presenting i recently looked up to see whether or not there was a alternative for someone who is um non-binary or perhaps if trans because uh it's very binary in some of the dances and things like that but uh, I haven't found that yet. I'm still looking into it. There's, there's still some research on that. So, but there's a lot of really good, interesting culture around uh, New Zealand and especially Maori culture. So I do recommend looking into it if you ever get the chance. <laughs> okay, anything else? Anything else? Because they're about to stick, they're, 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 about to, they're about to shove me in the cage. Anyone? Yes, no, maybe, no? Uh, okay um uh sorry that, that that's all my panels for, for for the convention 
and um, I will be hopefully may maybe they'll release me um, so I can go back to streaming on Twitch again starting from later on this week. Uh, I, I don't know. Um, it, it depends on if enough people came to my panels and if um, someone, if enough people came to buy some really cute merch of me, uh, which is available at the Anime Fest Dealers Den, uh, sorry, the Dealers Room. Uh, and um, 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 oh, 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 okay, okay, uh, oh, 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 God, all right. Uh, okay, uh, uh, I'm going back in the cage now. But bye, everyone. Oh, 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 ha, 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 ha. They can try, they can try, but they can't defeat me. They can try, ha, ha, they can try. <laughs> Wait, no, no, whoa, 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 whoa.